God bless my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord and the beauty of his holiness. I just wanted to share um, this teaching today just to help many understand why sin is such a bad thing. And many are uneducated and not knowledgeable in God's word, which is called scripture. Okay, these are sacred biblical writings that was given to us from God. As men of God, servants of God, those who were entrusted and chosen to be sent forth to repeat the words that God gave them and to live and obey the words that God gave them. So we call them scripture. We call them the word of God. We call it the knowledge of the truth. These are all the names that's in the Bible. So when we look at the world today, and many of y'all will say, oh, he's, he's always talking about the false Christian, but today we're going to put everybody in a pot, okay? The things that I speak on is what God gives me. It's not something that I choose. It's not something that I just come up with myself. I do as I'm told. So whatever God wants me to teach on and speak on, that's what I do. But I want to just talk about how if you sin, then you are a bad person. And many people don't know what the Bible says about sin. Many, like I said, are not educated to understand what the scripture says in relations to sins and, and sins being committed. So a lot of people feel that they're not bad people because or they feel they're not wicked or they feel they're not evil. All from the simple fact that they're going off of what someone else has told them or what the world, when we say the world, we're talking about this planet. Okay, that humans live on, which is called the earth, right? Now, when we say as a Christian, because sometimes, you know, these um, false pastors, they just get to talking and they just be saying stuff as if people are educated and people know scriptures. They're not educated themselves because if they was, they would explain it in more detail, right? They just repeat what their dads told them or whatever they learned off the internet. But when we say worldly, as a Christian, like if I say, hey, this person is worldly or what you're doing is worldly, that's just saying that they're doing what the rest of the world does. An unbelieving world. OK, because we know that the word of God is not recepted, is not respected nor accepted in this world. So naturally, the world is not spiritual because the Bible is spiritual. That means that these things came from a spirit. The source of the information that we have in the Bible came from a spiritual source, not a human source, not a physical source. OK, spiritual from the Holy Spirit, whatever the case may be, is from the spirit. So we wouldn't say it's worldly because the worldly is the earth. Right. The world that commits sins and commits evil. So that's what being worldly means that people are doing what non-believers are doing in this world that they occupy, that they inhabit, right? So this is why we say, hey, they're worldly. They're non-believers because a believer is going to believe in whatever it is that they're taught. They believe in it. Like if I believe to drink water, I'm going to drink water. If I believe to eat, I'm going to believe, you know, that I need to eat food. I don't need someone to remind me over and over and over that um, I'm supposed to eat and drink if I believe that my life depends on it. So clearly, so clearly, so clearly a believer is someone who believes in whatever is being told to them, right? That's a believer because you're, you're believing in whatever was told. You're believing in whatever is being said to you. So this is my point that I'm trying to make to you all is that this life as a Christian is, is, is simple and easy for me 
The reason why it's simple and it's easy for me is a simple fact. Hold on. I had the Bluetooth still on. The reason why this life is simple and easy for me is because I desire to live for God. I desire to do the things that the Bible tells me. I'm not looking for fame and fortune, celebrity status, all this wealth and money. So everything the Bible says and many other things, right? I'm not looking to be sleeping around with multiple women and, you know, trying to make a name for myself. And I'm just not worried about those things. So this life is perfect for me, but this life is not perfect for you if you want to be worldly. And let's do a recap. What did I just teach you that worldly was? Worldly is the opposite of what, if a person is being worldly, if you look around and the Bible tells you that the whole world lies in wickedness and that the light came into the world, but men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil, then when we say that they're worldly, we're saying these are people who do what a non-believing world does, okay? So that's what you do. You enjoy the things that people who don't know about God or who don't serve God enjoys. You laugh at what people who don't know about God laughs at. You commit the sins that people who don't know about God commit. People who don't serve God commit. So you live the identical way that the non-believing world lives. Okay? You commit the sins. The only thing that separates people from the world from worldly people is righteousness because our world is not a world of righteousness. Our world is a world that God has enforced certain laws and rules and regulations so they can be balanced right in the world. This is what God did. So the point that I'm trying to make to you all is that to be worldly, it means that you are doing what the rest of the world is doing. You are enjoying the rest of the things that non-believers enjoy. You talk like them. You're entertained by them. You laugh at them. You feel comfortable around them. Doesn't matter how you, you try to spin it. That's your comfort place. Okay, instead of reading the Bible and doing these things, you'd rather watch TV. You'd rather watch shows. You'd rather be out drinking and smoking and hanging out. That's what non-believers do. Okay? So... You see why God feels that uh, those people that do those things are worthy of death? You see why some people that's in this world drop dead from heart attacks and they have kids and, you know, they have husbands and wives. I remember Sarah said that one of her cousins had recently got married or was getting married and the guy, the husband just dies right after. I mean, like soon after he just dies, you know. So the point I'm making to you is that you're not fit to be in this world because every serial killer, every rapist, every murderer, every uh, um, person who spread AIDS or contracted HIV, every person who robbed, who stilled, who lied, who, who whipped somebody, raped somebody, hung somebody on a, on a tree, tied a noose around their neck, Anyone that looked at a different race in a bad light, you these are the people who you're reading about on the news. These are people who you read about. The Hitlers, right? These, these old war people that fought all these battles and killed people. These are all the non-believers. You see how much havoc Hitler put on this world? You see how much evil Hitler did to the Jewish people? You see the wickedness that he did? Uh, there you go. So you see why there's no place people that's in this in these world. You see why someone dies of a heart attack. You see how someone had a stroke out of nowhere. You see how someone, you know, died in a car accident. Someone committed suicide and God doesn't stop it. Well, all the people that I just named are, are, were all non-believers. They all didn't believe in God. That's why it lets them do things that God didn't say. You understand? So if you believe in something, you wouldn't do the opposite of that, right? Because then that makes you a non-believer. So Hitler, uh, these people who killed people, robbed people, raped people, molested children, pedophiles, whatever you want to call them, 
These people were all non-believers because everything I just named from murder to hate to racism to 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 adultery to lust to fornication to sexual immorality to inordinate affections. These are all in these words are all in the Bible. So a believer would not do those things the same way I believe to drink water. I believe to eat. I don't have to be told to eat and to drink water. Right. I enjoy drinking water. I know that food is something that my body needs. So I don't have to be told twice about it. So every person that I named that does those things that you read about, the Waco, Texas ranch, guess what he was doing? He was a non-believer. All them Columbine people, the, the, the kids shot them high schools up, guess what? Non-believers, what about the, 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 the shooting in, in Las Vegas at the country music concert? Guess what? Non-believers, so, I mean, the people that flew the buildings into the, to the, to the Twin Towers, guess what? Non-believers. So why is God going to preserve these people's lives? Why is God going to let you live here all these years so you can raise your kids to hate black people, to hate white people, to, to look at women and like, like they're a piece of meat, or to look at men, you know, like they're the bottom of your shoe? What purpose do you have in this world in God's eyes to want to keep you here? For what reason? This is why you see people who you look at like, man, they were a good person. Man, they look like they, then they just die off unexpectedly. Okay. You see that? No, nobody knows. Well, what did they die for? You see, you don't have no purpose here. All you're going to do is keep spreading this contagious disease, which is called sin. Okay. Remember when COVID hit the world? It was like six feet, social distancing, right? They didn't want it to be spread, to be contagious, be coughed on, sneezed on, breathed on, right? Sin, that's why the Bible tells you in Romans, okay? In the book of Romans, it tells you that they which do such things are worthy of death, right? Not only those who do it, but those who find pleasure in people who do do sin. They worthy of death. Read it. It's in Romans. Start in chapter one. You'll see it for yourself. Right? So a person who sin has no place in this earth for God. So that means that you could live to your 20 or you might live to your 100. You're going to suffer though. And then when you die, you're going to go on to hell. That's why every person who was living on this earth that is a sinner that sins, they are going through some type of torment, whether it's physical, right? Spiritual, health wise, they're being attacked and afflicted because that's what happens when you allow darkness into your body. Let me explain to you what evil spirits are. Let me explain to you what they do. You know how when you, you people get sick, right? You get a cold or a flu or a virus. What does it do to your body? That's right. You experience fatigue. You experience cough, headache, you know, body spasms, body ache, all this stuff. Right. Because the sickness does not belong in the body. So a spirit is designed to be like poison. You understand when you get bit by a, a, a venomous snake, a poisonous snake, um, if they have the anti venom, they have to give it to you because it's going to start tearing down muscle and and, and affecting your blood and causing your body to have this reaction, right? So, just like when people get stung by a bee, you see how it, it puffs up or you get bit by an ant, you see the venom that a lot of these insects have, the small dosage though, but your body still is affected by it? That's right. And that's a small dosage of a little bit of venom that certain bees and certain insects have. And you see your body skin react to bubbles and blisters and boils, right? Now, or you might feel a little hot or, you know, a little faintish because of the little venom going inside your body, right? So, a spirit enters you. You might, if God set your life to live until you're 80 years old, you're going to live until you're 80 years old, okay? But you're going to suffer. Some days you're not going to suffer. Some days you are going to suffer because it has to be balanced. You're destined to die and go to hell. But you still have to play your role on this earth. You're his creation. 
So every human being, whether they're going to be a serial killer, whether they're going to be a rapist, whether they're going to be the president, whether they're going to be a servant of God, they have a purpose to play. You have to prove the word to be true. Even if you never come to God, you still have a role to play by God to show that the world finds pleasure in sin. That's why the Bible said the wicked is reserved until the day of redemption. You understand? You look at all these celebrities and say, these celebrities, they, they, they live in the best life. The celebrities, the family, they got the best life. But you see how the news, the, show, the media, journalists, they always showing you what's going on in celebrities' lives. Multiple marriages, filing bankruptcy, going to jail, angry all the time, insecure, multiple surgeries. They're, ch they're trying to show you something, but you're overlooking it. You're looking at it through, through delusion and not looking at it through logic and faith, okay? But you're seeing their lives are miserable because human beings was is not designed. Human beings were not created nor designed to receive glory, okay? They wasn't, not for man, okay? Only God, you can't handle it. Just like the way you can't handle the, the cares, you can't handle the weight of the cares of others, you can't handle the weight of sorrow. You can't handle the weight of depression, the weight of insecurity. All that stuff drags you down. That's why the Bible say, cast all your cares upon the Lord, right? It's he's supposed to fight the battle. He's supposed to carry the heavy load, you know? So this is the problem. So every person that, that you look at on the news or you see on Facebook news or Google news or whatever you know, means of, 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 of you know, uh, social media that you're using, whatever means that you're using to look at the news, you see that all these people are bad people. They've done bad things. But in order for someone to murder someone, they have to be angry. They have to have hate. They have to not be a believer. So how are all these false Christians walking around today telling you that we all sin? Everybody makes mistakes. No, you sin. You a wicked person if you a sinner. I used to be a sinner. I used to be a person who committed sins, but I know better now. They sit there and say, they, you know what's so funny? The false Christian is so bold because you'd be like, I don't sin. What? You don't sin? I'm not talking to you. You're like, well, prove to me that I do sin. You don't even know me. A person don't even know your life. They don't even know what you do in the day. And they still be like, oh, no, you sin. That's good they walking away. Because that is not somebody you want to have a conversation with because they're foolish. And they're ignorant. They don't know you. Just like the world says, this is the world's strongest man. They say that loosely. This is the fastest person in the world. Usain Bolt was the fastest person. He was the fastest out of the people that he competed with. Everyone might not make it to the Olympics. There's a lot of fast people who never got out there and race. You're saying that every strong person competes? Every gym goer wants to become a strong man? Every gym, every person that runs for a living or sprint or, or run long distance, they're in marathons? I'm just asking. So you don't have intelligent people outside of people that are known for their intelligence? So you're saying the world is controlled. Or the world is made up of the people who are known for their abilities and their great achievements. You got videos on YouTube where you see people that's playing basketball just as good as NBA players. People that can throw a football just as far as a quarterback that's being paid millions of dollars. What's the difference? Someone can tackle the same way a linebacker can tackle. Right? But he just get, he didn't get picked. Remember, it's the world choosing these people. You see a lot of people that join, NBA, that, that join the NBA, right? But a lot of them don't stand out like the LeBrons and the, and the Kobe's and the, the Kyrie's and the, and the um, you know, the different people. I don't know. Steph Curry. They don't stand out like them because when they draft people, they draft people that are playing at a level that they accept, right? That's entertaining. But you don't really know too many other names like that. But the main ones who stand out, right? 
So it goes to show you that when they're drafting these people, they're not, everyone is not that, as the world say, not that star that's going to put up LeBron James and Michael Jordan and Shaquille O'Neal numbers, right? There's been a lot of big men that came since Shaquille O'Neal, but still doesn't have bigger names than him in the world, right? Because there's a certain group of people who possess certain abilities, right? That can do a little bit more or play a little bit harder than their peers. But that's all around the world. So they're teaching you something. They're drafting all these players from high school or from college, football, baseball, whatever. And when you watch a baseball game, you might never even know who are the other people hitting the baseball. But you got that one person, Barry Bonds, Mark Wallenberg, Sammy Sosa, right? You know, Derek Jeter. You know those names because of the numbers they're putting up. But they're in the major leagues or the NBA or the NFL as their other teammates. But their teammates are playing to a professionalism or to a way that keeps them at, you know, lets them be a professional and get paid all those millions. But Derek Jeter, Barrick Bonds, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, these guys were all known. David Ortiz, David Beckham in soccer. These guys were all known for just doing a little bit more than the average teammate, right? Or the average players, right? Scoring a little bit more points, a little bit more steals, making more goals in soccer, throwing more touchdowns, catching more touchdown passes. But they're wide receivers. Odell Beckham, right? All these people can sing. Beyonce can sing. Mariah Carey can sing. Aaliyah was alive. She could sing. When Houston could sing, you know, uh, uh, Kelly Rowland. All these people could sing, right? But it's something that Beyonce does in the eyes of the world that brings her more popularity. Sometimes she might could be able to sing and dance at the same time without losing much breath. Maybe she's a a better performer as the world feels. I'm talking, this is the, I'm just showing you the world, right? The Bible said, I became like all men that might read some. So the Holy Spirit knows how to relate to people because God created everything, right? Human beings. So they might say, well, when Beyonce performs, you know, she can dance, she can keep the note and she sounds good, you know, and she performs in, in her words and her songs and everything else, right? Somebody else might perform and they have a harder time of remembering the steps while they're singing and hitting those high notes. So some of you might say, well, she's a better performer, right? That's how the world views it. So the point of me saying all of this is to explain to you that the world categorized itself. It says you're the best, you're the best basketball player ever lived. That's not true. You're the fastest man in the whole earth, fast woman in the whole earth. That's not true. The correct way would be that you have put up a lot of more points, Jordan, than all other people. But you haven't played every person one-on-one -on -one to see if you could beat them. LeBron hasn't played against every person to see if somebody can block his dunks or, or, or stop him from getting to the basket, right? Shaq hasn't played against every big and tall man that plays center in the world. You got, oh, you got overseas teams, right? You got people that's in college. You got people who, you know, this and that. So they might say, well, at the, you know, he's the, he's the best center that ever lived. You see, it's being used loosely. So my whole point of all of this is that when you look at the world and you look at sins, how can a person claim to be a Christian and say they still sin? That mean that whatever sin that you see being whatever sins that are taking place in the world, these false Christians are doing those things. Because what is sins? I'm going to read them to you in a second. Okay? So, if you're a non-believer... You're just as bad. If you're a false Christian and you sin, you're just as bad. You're wicked, you're evil. If, you're, if you believe in any other religion, Islam, Buddhism, Hindu, whatever, 
you're just as wicked because you all sin. The only one who doesn't sin and the only one who is righteous is a true Christian. Not the ones who's on TV telling you that we all make mistakes and we all sin. They're not Christians. They're in Christianity. That's why they got the name. Okay. When do you care about someone that's a liar trying to tell you the truth? It's not about them confessing who they are. It's about what the facts say. Okay. People are not going to jail because there's no evidence at all. Okay. It's facts. So the Bible tells us specifically, right, how we're supposed to live as a believer. The way we're supposed to think and to speak as a believer so we don't have to go off because somebody said, oh, I'm a Christian. It doesn't matter. Somebody can claim to be Ronald. What does that mean? What does that mean? Is that, is that, is that who they are? People scam people every day getting their credit card information. And they lie and act like they're legitimate companies. What's the difference? So you have to fact check it. So you see, people, this is how you know it's, a spiritual, it's, it's, it's spiritual what's taking place. And that Satan is behind it. Because people will get mad at you for you telling them what God's words say rather than just accepting what God's words say and be like, okay, that's what it says. Okay, I'm wrong. But they'll argue and fight you because in them, they feel that whatever they're hearing is not sitting well. That's why they run to the internet. Think about it. That's why they run to the internet. So let's look at what I got right now. Okay, let's break this down. Okay, if you sin, you are a bad person. I can prove it with scripture. If you claim to be a Christian and you sin, you are an evil person. If you are a non-believer, you are a bad person. If you claim any false religion, you are a wicked person. Galatians 5 and 16. So let's see what these sins are. Okay, let's see what the sins are. And then we're going to see what it looks like to be a true Christian, how we're truly different from every other false religion, every other group, gang, boys and girls club, whatever. We're different. A true Christian. I'm not talking about the ones on TBN. I'm not talking about the ones that you know that has been known for the last 15, 20, 30 years. I'm not talking about them. They're fake Christians. We don't got to mention no names. If you know this word, see, the thing about it, sometimes these teachings are, are, you know, too much for people who's not serious about looking into what the word of God say. If you're just watching just to pass the time, then this is the wrong video for you. You have to know what the word says. You have to take notes of what I'm saying. Take these scriptures down. Have your Bible. Write them down. Look them up. After the video is over, go back and rewind. And pull it up. And then when you start seeing these people who claim to be Christians. And now you have learned what the Bible say. From this hard work and dedication to teach you the truth of God's word. Then you'll be able to be like, I understand what Brother Ronald is saying. That makes sense. Galatians 5 and 16. This then I say. Walk in the spirit. And you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust is against the spirit. You see that? So you cannot be spiritual and be fleshly at the same time. Doesn't make any sense. Okay. For the, for the flesh, lust against the spirit and the spirit. You know how they don't, you know how they, they don't say that the spirit lusts against the flesh. Did y'all catch that? We don't sin. Y'all don't, don't catch it, did y'all? Sarah, y'all listening? Jeremy, look, let me show y'all. Let me read it again. They're not, they say the lust, the, the lust uh, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, but they don't say the spirit lusts against the flesh. Notice that. That's how I'm showing you. This ain't come from no man. Okay? Just watch it. You see, we don't commit no sin. They didn't say, oh, the spirit lusts against the... They didn't say that. They said the flesh, which is a sinful, which is, which is uh, wicked, which is iniquities. Watch this, Sarah. Look. For the lust, lust is against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. It didn't say it lusts. It said that the, 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 the sinful side... Lust is the spiritual side is against the sinful side. Not that it lusts is too. It didn't say the flesh lusts against the spirit. The spirit lusts against the flesh. It didn't say that. You caught that, sir? Look how deep that is. Right? 
Then it says, in the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. You see that? You see? You can't be lukewarm. But if you be led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works are the flesh. These bugs are, every time it's about to, somebody to go down. That's right, sir. You see how deep that was? That man, a man didn't write this. Because a man wouldn't have caught that. A man would have said, well, yeah, the, the, the spirit is doing it against it, you know. No. Because the spirit, they could say lust is like wanting to desire something. And they could be like, well, he wanted to desire that his flesh doesn't do that. No. They didn't even put lust in, in the same sentence with the spirit. That's right, sir. See how deep it is? God, ain't no man wrote this Bible. That's why you see there ain't no little mistakes like that. It say the, the, um, the, 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 the lust, the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against you don't say lust as well. We don't sin. I'm telling you. Now, the works of the flesh. Now, this means the sinful nature. Okay? This means what, what you're going to see non-believers and false Christian and those who are in false religion is going to do. Right? Because they're in the flesh. That means they're sinners. Right? Just watch. You're going to see adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, Witchcraft, hatred, denomination, see, variance, eliminations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. You see, they're telling you that's everything you see in a false church today. Everything. I, I mean, I still got more to read, but I'm just showing you. Those are everything you see in the false church today. I'm telling you, because listen, if you the, the whole purpose of God's word, the gospel was to separate us from the world, the way the world thinks, the way the world functions, the way the world operates. It was designed to separate us from them, okay? Because you can't function like the world and serve God. You've been taught too much hate, too much division. You understand? So you cannot be in a denomination. You cannot claim to be Baptist, Pentecostal. That's why all those false Christians are always in the hospital, taking pills, having surgeries, being attacked. They, they, they've been attacked so long, they just, they just accept the fact that that's what comes with living for God. They make it be that way. Although the scripture tells you that we got power and authority over devils, right? And that Satan will flee from you, but they've been having the same attacks, being held down, the same lustful dreams, waking up, sperm out their penis, women waking up and they, they're wet down there for years, but because God is not with them and they're not serving God, I say to them except in reality that they're not true believers. They make themselves believe that uh, all is well. That's just part of being a believer. They do all these things. Okay. Look what it says. It says envians, murders, drunkenness, revows, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past. That they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So make it make sense when they're telling you that we all make, we all sin and we all make mistakes. Now, Galatians is reading this. If Galatians is reading what they're saying, right? If Galatians, if these Galatians are listening to what Paul is saying, right? And this is the only epistle they got, okay? Before some of them died or before. They was able to hear other epistles. Some of them went to prison. Some of them were sent to islands and became slaves, whatever. What did Paul say? This is in the mirror. If, if you're in Galatians right now, right? You don't got no other Bible verses, no other epistles. Okay. And the Bible can't lie. It's not a contradiction. So there's nowhere where the Bible is going to say you can sin. And then they're going to say you can't sin. Paul is talking to believers. Okay. He's telling you, I have told you before. As I have told you in times past. So that means he told him before. He's repeating himself. He says. That they which do such things. That means you. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And if he wasn't talking to Christians. And talking to believers. When he's saying this. If you're saying you're a believer of God. Then why did he say this in the next sentence then? Read. Watch this. If he's not talking to all of us. You claim to be a believer, then why in the next sentence did he say this? 
Okay? He wouldn't have said this. He would say, hey, do your best. You know, try to do whatever. You know, you've been taught everything. You know, just try to live ethical and civil with your neighbor, right? That's not what he says. Then he says, but the fruit, he says, but. What's the word but for, y'all? Come on, you went to, you graduated high school. Or y'all been taught this in, in every school. What's the word but? But the fruit of the spirit. Remember, he first told you, let's go all the way to the top first so we can follow along. Galatians 5, verse 16. This I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you cannot do things that you, uh, that, uh, um, that you would. But people live by spirit not under the law. Now, the works. So he's telling you about the fleshly behavior of sinners. First, he said spirit, he said flesh, he said spirit, right? So he broke down the flesh. Now he's going to break down the spirit. Okay? So now if it was the same and we all make mistakes, then we would have just been told about the fleshly stuff because there's no way that you can be fleshly and spiritual, right? What did he just say? He said, I say, walk in the spirit and you shall not, you shall not mean it won't happen. Okay. Fulfill the lust of the flesh. That means your sinful nature. Okay. You can't once you're born again. He said, you shall not for the lust of the flesh for the flesh. He breaking it down now. Just get going a little bit deeper with y'all so you can understand it. Why it, does, it, it can't happen for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary. That means opposite. That's right. It's the opposite. Okay? So you can't have both. The one, the one, the one to the another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now watch this. But if you be led by the spirit, you're not under the law. So now he's going to now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, you read it all. And those who do these things when I hear the kingdom of God, right? That's the flesh. Now, the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 5, verse 22, is love. How can you, how, let me ask you a question. Did you hear what he said, what one of the works of the flesh are? He said, adultery, witchcraft, and hatred. Hmm. So how, if you're walking in the spirit and you have love that comes from a gift, a gift. Remember, the fruit of the spirit is a gift from God. <laughs> These are what comes from. This is what comes when you see the Holy Spirit. OK, when you go to a store and you buy a package and they got the toothbrush and the toothpaste and the, the floss. And, you know, you have all these 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 needful things in this in this bundle deal, this bundle package. Right. You go to Macy's sometime. They got the cologne with the lotion and the body wash and the, and the cologne. And they have like a little travel sprayer. Right. A few gifts, right? Different gifts. So the fruit of the spirit is the nature of the Holy Ghost, is the personality of the Holy Ghost, is the attributes of the Holy Spirit, which is Christ. That's why I said Christ be in you. That's the spirit. How else will Christ be in you? But through the Holy Spirit. That's right. Okay. So there's no other way. Christ wasn't in the people in the Old Testament. Okay. Even the first and Sadducees. Christ is only in you through the Holy Spirit. If I don't, if, the, if, if I don't, you know, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit can't come, right? So he said, wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. You'll receive power just like him. Authority just like him. Sinless life just like him. That's right. John 14 and 12. The same works he's doing even greater. Now, so look what it says. It says this. Now, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love. So how can you be walking in love and then have hatred as well, which is one of the works of the flesh? Make it make sense, y'all. Come on now. Come on. How can there be hatred and you still be racist? Can a Ku Klux Klan member, a, a Nazi person, say, I love those black people. I love them so much. But their whole uh, gang and their belief is based off of hating these black people. Hating Chinese or hating whoever. That's not the same as them, right? The Ku Klux Klan, Nazis. Whatever, right? They are they have hatred. So there is no love for you, right? In their heart. So how can you have the spirit and have love? See, let's go back to the top. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh is against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. 
and these are contrary. You see that? So you cannot have love and have hate. You see? That's why as a false Christian, you can't serve God. Because you hate his word. You only been brought into Christianity. Look what it says. In the spirit against the flesh, and, and, and these are contrary to one another, so you cannot do things you would. That you would. You see that? You cannot do things that you would. See? You got to choose one. That's what they're telling you. Okay? But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against there is no such law. You know why there's not? Because you're righteous. That's right. The law is fulfilled through faith and obedience and full compliance to the Lord's word. And they that are Christ. Look what he said. Not the flesh. Not the flesh. Not, not the first few verses that we just read. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. You hear that? With the affections. If your affection is dead, what happens? With the affections and the lust. So if you crucify, if the, if the flesh is crucified, which means it's put to death. Okay. So if an animal that has rabies is killed, can it still do harm? Can a, can a, a raccoon that got rabies still bite somebody or attack somebody? No, it's put to death. Okay. If the affection is gone in a person's relationship towards them and their wife, right? Do they still have a desire to be with them? And still have a desire to make love. And still have a desire to... No. The affection is gone. Okay? And what about the lust? So if the lust is gone, then why people have a desire to buy expensive cars and expensive clothes and expensive jewelry? Right? If the lust and the affection is gone, you won't do those things. Right? So let's read it again. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. You see that? You see? So it don't make any sense. Now, let me remember what I told y'all before. Okay, let me go back down to the bottom of my notes. Okay. The first sins, the first sins that were, oh, I put on. Bug spray. Hold on. Okay. The first sins that was ever committed was disobedience and rebellion from Lucifer against God, right? You can read about it in Ezekiel, read about it in Isaiah. The first thing which he provoked man the first sin that he provoked man to, I mean, the first thing which he provoked man to commit was disobeying God, just like he did. See? So that nature comes from him. The Bible said Christ knew no sin, right? Neither was guilt found in his mouth, he was right, he was right, not, never did any evil, right? So, as a false Christian, as a non believer, as a person that's in these false religions, according to the Bible, that they all don't like and they all hate, who do they look more like? Satan or God? There you go. Who do, they, who do, who do Christ at 12 years old said, I have to be about my father's business, right? Lucifer, Satan, rebelled against God, right? Disobeyed God. Cause man, provoke man, right? To make the choice upon themselves to disobey God as well. So they took on the nature. There was no one else here that came and made them think about such and to do such, but the devil. So they learned that behavior from who? Satan. So when Christ came, right? Did you see Christ disobey God? Did you see Christ ever get fearful or complain or say, I don't want to be a believer or I'm losing faith, you know, or I'm tired of people. They always want to come argue with me and ask me about this, and ask me about that. You catch me like, you ever see him lose his cool? You ever see him get angry, be impatient, be frustrated, not put himself before others? No. 
right? The Bible said the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Christ came and fed people, strangers. You see that? So who nature do you have? When you say you're a Christian and you sin, that nature comes from the devil. You've been taught a new way of thinking and a new way of speaking. Philippians even tells you how to think. It says, think on these things. It's telling you. You don't even got to come up with how to occupy or entertain yourself throughout the day. Occupy your time. God has already done it. By telling you, think on things that are lovely. Things that are just. You see that? You don't even got, well, what does God want me to think about? Hmm, let's think about flowers and daisies and rose petals. Nope. He told you how to think. He told you how to speak. What should I speak today? Let me speak about, um, you know, crocodiles and, and, and bears and no. He say, let your speech, Philippians 127, become it the gospel. Right? Speak the word. It's a whole book written that you can speak. Every day you can have a conversation about the Bible. Okay? Speak the word of God. Okay? So, now, now we understand what Lucifer did in heaven. And then when, when, when he came down to earth to tempt provoke Eve and then of course Adam this is the same nature this is the same behavior that you see being done today you know he tells you things and you make a choice disobey or obey okay so 1 John 3 talks about being the child of the devil I seen something on, on the internet where it was like this person, I don't know who they were talking about. I don't know if it was Doja Cat, some singer lady. They were saying that like she was possessed or whatever the case may be. They don't even know what possessed mean. They're possessed even being at the, the, the concerts. They're all possessed. The ones who you feel is the most possessed, the ones who you feel is the less possessed are still possessed. Still have spirits in you. Even when you write in the comment and saying she's wearing all black, she's possessed. You are possessed yourself. Okay, unless you have the spirit of God, you are possessed yourself. You've been taught from Hollywood and from Satan trying to teach this, teach, no, he not trying, he did teach this false version, but trying to water down the word of God that devils, people being possessed have to look like what you see on TV. Now, you know that you're ignorant because when you see movies or you see pictures of Satan, he always have like horns and sharp teeth. Now, we know that angels, as Hebrew tells us, are spirits. Okay? They're spirits. So we know that a spirit, because Jesus said, right? He said, he said, he said, handle me. And see that I'm not a spirit. Because the spirit doesn't have flesh. Right? So they're not physical. So how would you paint a physical picture of something that doesn't have a physical appearance? Right? You notice nobody ever tried to paint a picture of God? You notice? You see? They don't have anything to go off of. But, you know, they don't never paint God in a picture because God leaves himself out of not even trying to. See, they talk about the serpent, the beast. They say all these things. So these things make them feel, OK, this is what Satan looks like. They never said that he was a physical beast. You understand? Never said that. So they paint these things off of what they might have seen in the Bible. Not understanding that he's still spiritual, no matter how the Bible described him. Okay, that's for you to understand. Okay, now, 1 John 3, and every man that has this hope, what hope? Believing in God, obeying Jesus Christ, living righteous, live holy, live godly, right? Have in this hope in him purify himself. What's purified mean? 
Come on, y'all. Even as he is pure. You see that? They always make us the same with Christ. Walk as he walked. John 14, 12, we'll do the same works that he done, right? And even greater, they never make it seem that, that we're not going to have the same abilities that Christ had when it's his spirit living inside of us. That doesn't make any sense. You're saying that the spirit of God can't put this flesh into submission to make it do what it wanted to do. But Christ was in flesh and blood and lived without sinning, born of the spirit. You don't see how the same thing happens? What sin did John the Baptist commit? There you go. First John 3 and 3. And every man that has this hope in him, purify himself, you know, he's pure. Whosoever committed sin, transgressive also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and him is no sin. You see that? Whosoever, now look what he just said. In him is no sin. You see that? Who are they talking about? Christ. Now look what they're about to say. Whosoever abide him in him, sin if not. You see that? They just, I told you, they always showing you Christ didn't sin. Christ didn't speak any evil. Then they tell us, speak no evil. Right? When they showed Christ being crucified, what did he say? Forgive them. They showed his servant, his follower, which name is Stephen, being stoned. What did he say? Lay it under their charge. Forgive them, God. You see that? So how does Stephen have the same abilities that Christ did when they both was being going through suffering and pain, right? At the hands of wicked people. But they both, you always talk about God was only one perfect. But didn't Stephen handle it the way he was told in the four gospels? Love your enemies, speak evil of no man, don't repay evil, evil, repay evil with good. I mean, all these things are what the word of God says. So when Stephen was being stoned, where do you see the flesh come out? Where well, he got fearful. The boss haven't given you a spirit of fear, but a power loving of what? A sound mind. So you didn't see no fear in him. See, he had the spirit of God. Then you see that he had forgiveness. The same way that, that Christ had on the cross and what he taught us as believers. He didn't cry out and say, Oh my God, I hate these people. I didn't do anything wrong. Nope. You see? How did he do that? Because he had the spirit. Remember the Bible said uh, 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 in the book of Acts, they said they need seven men of honor support and up full of the Holy Spirit, right? And Stephen was one of them. You see that? That's why when he faced the same thing that Christ faced, he reacted the same way, identically. Because he had the spirit of Jesus, God, Christ in him. That's right. That's why the Bible saying John 4 said, we'll do the same works and even greater. We'll walk as he walked. So now they're showing you that Christ didn't sin. Then they say, whosoever abideth in him, sin if not. Look what it says in the verse 5. And you know he's meant to take away our sins and in him is no sin. You hear that? In him is no sin. Now, if him is in you, then there won't be no sin in you as well. Because how will he be in you in their sin when the Bible say God is light, him no darkness at all? Hmm. So God is putting up with your sins inside of you. And just you, you're just walking around the earth with the, with the spirit of Christ that's inside of you. And you're and you're in darkness. So you so you're saying that God is just holding walking with the devil inside your body. Come on, brothers and sisters. It sounds strange. It says, whoever abided in him, sin if not. Whoever sinned if have neither seen him, neither known him. That's true. Because what do unbelievers do? Y'all didn't catch that? What do unbelievers do? They sin. They don't know him. Nor have they seen him. So they are ignorant to what the word of God says. So they don't know him, nor have they seen him. Because if you know him, and you believe him, and you've seen him, then you wouldn't live in sin. See that? He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Then he's going to go back and show you about Cain to show you that he chose Satan's way and not God, because God gave Cain a choice. I can show you in the Bible, okay, in Genesis, right? But Cain chose the devil's way and not God. That's why he said he was of the wicked one, because when you live in sin, you a child of the devil as well. 
the same way Cain was. He, he didn't come from the devil. Clearly, Eve said, I got me a man child from the Lord. So we see about when Cain was born, it says that, right? So we know we're not saying that the devil gave uh, birth or, you know, he came. No, we're saying they are children of the devil because they follow in the devil ways and his behavior. Let me read. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness, righteousness, even he's righteous. He that committed sins of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this person of God's manifested, they might show the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remained in him, he cannot sin because he's born of God. And this is children of God will manifest and children of the devil. Whosoever does not do righteous, whoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he nor of his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of the wicked one, and slew his brother, and therefore slew he him, because his works were evil, and his brother righteous. You see that? See the difference? So you're being looked at the same way Cain was being looked at, because he chose to do evil like the devil, and that's what you're doing. It doesn't matter when you say, oh, I'm a Christian, I repent, I ask forgiveness. It doesn't matter. God don't hear the prayer of sinners. Read John 9. Okay? So why is, why is, I'm going to read a few things about sin, right? We're going to talk about money, lust, pride, anger, you know, whatever. And I'm going to show you why these things are all bad, right? I'm going to tell you what the words say, and then we're going to go and talk about why they're bad. These, bu these, birds, these bugs are attacking me now. I tell you, all every time the sun starts going down, this is when they start coming out. I even got on bug spray. They don't care. They want that, uh, whatever's on my skin, salt or sweat, whatever. Money. Let's talk about money. First Timothy 6 and 6. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain that we carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. That they will be, um, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. For some, for some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. You see that? What did, what you learn about money? The love of money. You see that? Everybody just say, yeah, but it says the love of money. But you love money though. All the folks that be saying that be the main ones who love money. You love money, right? So you see people that, that want to be rich and have money. This is why people get robbed. This is why they rob banks and put somebody through trauma. The why they rob somebody. Somebody might get killed in the process. All because they want the money. Because they have the love of money. What the money could buy. These false pastors. They tell you about you're going to be cursed and you're going to be condemned. And what a man robbed God. All because of money, because they want to live a luxury life. They want to live a life carefree, whatever the case may be. So they tell you whatever they want to tell you. Just look at what money does to people. Money have called people and their families to break up, to split. The love of money, design it for, for, for lustful purposes. Just look at what money does, okay? Let's look at lust. Matthew 5 and 28. But I say unto you, that whoever looks at, whoever, whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So you see that? Look at all the, the, the molestations, all the, the rapings, all the people, you know, fornicating while somebody is drunk or on a pill or somebody was, you know, you know, not able to be, you know, really responsive. It all was lust. Lusting, lusting, lusting. And what led to a lot of these kids being born without the mom and dad really wanting relationship. It was lust. It was the bottom. It was the breasts. It was the, the hips, the thighs. It was how a woman looked or how a man looked. So look at how many people are on child support. How many kids are growing up in single parent homes because of lust, right? Even my older kids, all because I lived in lust when I was in the world. And as I got older, you know, I didn't like the moms because, you know, I'm looking at it from the, in the eyes of the world. You know, you just, you, you got to deal with this person but you don't like them anymore or, you know, you have a hatred towards them or bitterness because of things they've done. And you don't know about forgiveness and stuff like that from the word. So you just let it go into bitterness and you justify, you know, your reasons why you're not there and all this other type of stuff. But what all I'm saying is it leads to chaos and destruction. Now you got a kid having to play both sides, one side, who they're going to be more loyal to. The mom over there talking about the dad all day. The dad gets you. You spend a weekend. He talking about mom all day. 
So that's too much trauma for a child. Now you got four people trying to raise one child. You got the mom's new boyfriend or husband and the dad's new wife or girlfriend, right? The new wife or, or, or a new girlfriend or the new wife. You see that? So you got four people that are from different backgrounds, four different opinions, four different people that, that you know, are from the world and have their own point of views and point inspections of worldly stuff. And they all trying to pour it into one child. That's not how God designed it. So it's all going to be dysfunctional. It's going to be chaos because of lust. Lust causes people to get raped. Lust causes children to get molested. Lust causes people to be pedophilias. Get into child pornography. It's all lust. Lust, lust, lust. So you see how if you're a sinner, if you sin, you're a bad person. That's right. It doesn't matter who you are. Even if you're married and you, and you go chewing your wife. Think about how you affected your wife. Think about how you affected your kids. Think about how you affected your husband. Think about how you affected your, your kids if you're the wife. That's right. Show me anything that, 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 that ends good from, from someone cheating or fornicating, sleeping with somebody and they getting pregnant and you don't want to be there and a whole baby is being brought into the world now. He didn't ask to be here or she. And look at the bad decisions that we make. I made bad decisions when I was in the world. Okay? That's why now I'm trying to get those things right. You know, the world is, a, the world is an unforgiving place. So, you know, you got to leave it in the hands of God. And do the best you can. That's it. You know, the world's not taught what I'm taught. To forgive. To know that it was darkness that was in me. To know that it was spirits that was in me. To know that I was rolling with the devil when I was in the world before I became a Christian. They're not going to understand that. They're not going to believe that. They're not going to want to listen to it. They're going to look at how many years went by, how much time went by. And I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand that I'm here now and I'm willing and I'm trying. That should be all that matter. But the world holds grudges and has bitterness and has resentment, right? Darkness makes it be heavy on them, you know, like a weight on their shoulders, okay? A weight on their back. And they feel like they don't want to deal with it. Because dealing with it means they got to face the reality of their heart, you know, and that they have to mature and they have to um, grow and put away childish ways and childish ways of thinking. You see, a lot of people want to face that because they don't feel like anything is wrong. Sometimes they feel better for people as they feel to be angry or to be unforgiven. Because they don't want to face that reality of their weaknesses and their insecurities, right? So let's keep moving. Let's talk about covetedness. James 4 and 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your own lust, the war in your members? Ye lust and you have not. Ye kill and ye desire to have and can obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask the must that you, you, you ask and miss that you make assumed upon your lust. You see that? You see how bad lust is? So anybody that sins, that walks in lust, is a bad person. That's right. No matter who you are. So when these false Christians talking about, oh, we all sin, we all make mistakes. You are a bad person. You are doing the same thing that child molesters are doing because sin is sin. You're saying a false Christian is not committing the same sins as non-believers? You tell me that sin is categorized for Christians and sins are categorized for non-believers. It's the same sin. If a, if, a, if, a, if a person claims to be a Christian and go to a liquor store, are they not going to the same place that non-believers go to buy liquor? So if a Christian go to a movie theater and watches a worldly movie, are, are there not non-believers going to? So you tell me that there's a place to sin for Christians and there's a place to sin for non-believers. So Christians are, are doing the same. The false Christians are doing the same thing. That the non-believers are not are doing. Because those things are all in the world. You understand? There's one place to buy. There's, there's only a few places to buy bottles of liquor in the world. Liquor stores. You understand? Clubs. All where non-believers are. So if you're saying that you're a, 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 you're a Christian and you sin, then that means that you are doing the sins that are destroying the world. I mean, you're committed to destroying the world. You're the same as the people who are molesting, lusting, robbing, fornicating, lying, cheating, lazy, prideful. You are part of that statistic. That's right. Only thing that's different is a believer. Okay? Let's talk about pride now. First Timothy 6 and 3. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing... Right? Dotting about questions and stripes of words where, wherewith cometh envy. See what pride does? Strife. Railings. Woo, these bugs are out here. Railings, evil surmising, 
perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and the stute of the truth, supposing that the gain is godliness from self control itself. You see how pride is, how the Bible talks about it? So you see how pride is in the world? You see what it leads to? Stripes, envies, railings, evil surmising, disputings, right? The stute of the truth, supposing that the gain is godliness. You see, how can, how can they think they're going to be godly when they have strife, envy, railings? They're delusional. Because pride is false strength. Pride makes you be, makes you believe that you are what you're not. You see that? What did he say? He said, he is proud knowing nothing. You see that? But pride makes you feel you know everything. See why pride is bad? You see it all in the world. That's right. Galatians 6 and 3. Pride. For if a man think, he himself, is, think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceive himself. I told y'all, false strength. That's why pride is so bad, because it hardens your heart. You don't want to listen. You don't want to receive. You can't be told anything. You see? So you don't want you, you can't be told nothing. And you don't you believe in that you are who you're not. Now that's not me. That's not me. And it's proven that it's you. But your heart is hardened. I prove it. Romans 12 and 16. Be of the same mind one to another. Mind not high things, but consider to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. See that? You don't even know how you breathe oxygen. You don't even know how to change your hair to turn gray. You don't even know how, you know, to make yourself taller or shorter, right? You can't do nothing. So how are you prideful when you don't control even your own life? You don't. You could be driving in the car. You could be in the most secured house in the world. Bulletproof windows, bulletproof couch, bulletproof, you know, snapback you're wearing, bulletproof jersey you're wearing, and still die of a heart attack. Because God said, thou fool, thy soul is required of thee that night. That's right. You see that? So what are you prideful for? You can't change anything. You don't got no control. You didn't make this world. You don't understand the functions of the rivers and the lakes and the, the oceans and the sky and everything. Like you don't understand nothing. So it's best to be humble and learn from God. Be taught from God. Let him build you up. You know you prideful. Y'all sit here, tell everybody else about themselves, but don't, don't want to talk about your flaws and the things that you're doing. You say, oh, I'm, I'm healthy. But you got to be told to drink water. I'm healthy, but you got to be told to brush your teeth twice a day. I'm healthy, but you got to be told to eat fruits and veggies and all this stuff. Come on, brothers and sisters. Y'all healthy, right? Oh, I'm a vegan. I'm a vegetarian. But you listen to unhealthy music. You're driving and speeding. You, you, you're, you're, you're a vegan and vegetarian, right? But you speed when you drive. You text when you drive. <laughs> you get angry. You're ready to choke somebody, punch somebody, beat somebody up. But you're so consciously aware of your health. But not consciously aware of your choices that you're making that can risk your life or risk other people, or cause other people's lives to be taken or even your freedom. But you're so focused on That's pride. How you care so much about what goes into your body but don't care about affecting somebody else's body, destroying your body in other ways, right? Or playing negative seating other people from your bad behavior. But you're so concerned about what goes in your body. You see the vegans sometimes, the ones, not everyone, you see the ones that you see on YouTube and, and TV, they be out there chanting, they be blocking the road, talking about don't eat no chicken, don't eat no, like why, why are they so extreme? If, they, if they're so, you know, if it's all about righteousness and about doing right, why do they want to force others to do what they're doing? Why are they so extreme about it? Like somebody go to Burger King, they're not like, hey, look, everybody, got me a Whopper and fries. In a Coke. But why does the vegan that's doing something that's, 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 that's different than the rest of the world, why they got to push it in your face? Right? Even with the, the gay community, the same thing. Like they want you to accept it. Ain't nobody walking around saying, hey, I'm single. I'm a straight man. I, don't, I only like women. They're not trying to push it in your face. But the LGBTQ, they, they're trying to push it in your face, making you accept it. Hey, you, you guys better accept this. You know, accept this. You know, homosexuality, we're, uh, we, we, we was born this way. Okay. Trying to force it on us. Don't eat meat. You, I don't want to get, you're wearing mink jackets and, you know, you're wearing wool. You, sh you shouldn't kill animals. But your food is named after a, a food that's named after an animal. You go eat a burger patty. Right? You got, you got uh, chicken tender, uh, vegan chicken tenders. Vegan chicken patty, vegan burger, 
vegan chicken. All the stuff that we non-vegan eat people eat. You see, delusion. It's all designed to make you be self-righteous, make you feel that you're super conscious and you're woke, like all the celebrities be saying, right? And make you feel that 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 uh, you're better than people. And you got to push, you know, you want others. That's why they always try to force people, people to do it. Oh, yeah, you should be a vegan. For what? You still got the same bad health you had even when you wasn't eating meat. I mean, even when you was eating meat. You got the same bad health. You're still going to doctors. You're still getting the flu. You're still getting sick. Still taking medicine. Your children still going to the hospital. And they got the best diet, as you say. But you still got the same health issues that you had even when you was eating meat. So I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, if it ain't spiritual, then what is it? <laughs> See, it's a little too deep, though. But let's, let's keep moving. Romans, I mean, uh, let's talk about pride a little bit more. Hebrews 3 and 8. Harden not your hearts, as in the pro uh, provocation, in the, in the day of the provocation, the day of temptation of the wilderness. When your father has tempted me, proved me, and saw my works for 40 years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, they do always err in their heart, and they have known not my ways, so I swear in my wrath, they should not in enter my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart. You see that? An evil heart. What's evil mean? Sinful. Of unbelief. That's right. What's unbelief? That means to not do what the word says. That's false Christians. That's non-believers. That's those in false religions. Everybody. Okay? We got all three of them in the same pot. Okay? Departing from the, the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called the day. Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. You see that? Sin. Sin. It doesn't make sense to say we're always going to sin. Or everybody makes mistakes. They wouldn't write the Bible this way. It would be too confusing. Okay? For we are made partakers of Christ. You see that? If we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. You hear that? If we hold. If we hold. While it is said today. If you will hear his voice. Harden not your hearts, as in provision, uh, provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke how about not all came out of Egypt by Moses. But but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned? You see that? Whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. See that? Sin and pride. Pride kept them from not receiving. They hardened their hearts. That's the same thing they do today. They don't want anything about the word of God. They're not open to receive it, especially the false Christian. Anger. Let's talk about anger. Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speak be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another. Ten heart, forgive one another. Even as Christ, Christ even for God, even as God for Christ has forgiven you. You see that? You see? Wrath, bitterness. Look at people have bitterness today. What happens? When somebody's bitter towards you, when somebody's in, have a wrath or somebody's angry, how they act towards you. You see that? How anger is destructive. So if you say you're a Christian or a non-believer or a person in false religion and, you, and you're and you angry, look what you do to people. The things you say that hurt people's feelings. The, the, the reactions you have in, in the physical when you're angry. You might hit somebody, assault somebody, kill somebody, enter somebody, traumatize somebody. A child seen it. A person seen it. Somebody went through some traumatizing experience because of your anger. That's right. It does not produce good any fruit. People that have anger, lust, all those things, they're bad people. Okay? Another one about anger. James 1 and 9. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. You see that? Slow to speak and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superflu superfluity of naughtiness and receive the meekness that engrafted word which is able to save your souls. You see that? Receive it. See? Oh, sorry, guys. Okay. Let's talk about laziness and idle. How laziness is wrong. How laziness is bad. And widow, they, 1 Timothy 5 and 13. And widow, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but tattletellers, also busybodies, speaking things that they, they ought not. You see what laziness brings? You see? It takes away from your consciousness. Right? It angers other people. Laziness causes frustration. You let your cousin come over the house, right? Or you stand over somebody's house and that person is lazy or you're lazy. You're not cleaning up. 
So now they're going to get frustrated, right? You're going to, it's, you know, they're already in darkness. So you're going to do things that's going to make them look at you in a bad light because of laziness, right? They, you're going to be a burden to them. So laziness causes people to be messy, unclean, not take care of themselves, not be responsible and cause others grief and frustration, right? And patience and ultimately uh, destroy relationships and bonds. Okay, that's just one, that's just a little bit of laziness. So look at, look what it says about the women, right? They go from, they're, they're, they're wandering about from house to house. Not only idle, but tattletellers, see? And busybodies, speaking things where they are not. You see all that comes from being lazy, wandering, and, and from being tattletellers. See that? All bad. See that? So people that do those things, you're a bad person. That's right. Titus 3 and 2, speak evil of no man to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all means unto all men. You see that? Look at people that fight. People have died from fights. People have their, people have got embarrassed or have shame because of fight. People come back and kill you because of a fight. You see that? It's not good. It's not good to talk about people. It's not good to speak evil of people. It's not good to gossip about people. Right? Because not only is that making you go further in darkness... Because now you're, you're building more pride in yourself because you're always talking about everybody else and they're, and what you feel that they're doing wrong or what you, can see, what you can clearly see that they're doing wrong. And that makes you feel that you can't be told anything, right? It makes you lack compassion. It makes you lack love. It makes you look down on people and it puts you on a pedestal and a high horse, right? And a person like that is not a good person. That's right. Let's move on. Let no... Corrupt communication. We're talking about slander, evil speaking, and gossip. Let no corrupt communication proceed that mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it minister grace to the hearers. You see that? Let no corrupt communication. Now look at curse words. Look at corrupt. Look at corrupt communication. What does it do? That's right. It doesn't do good things. Hurts feelings. Right. Starts fights. Starts wars. Everything. Maybe people not forgive you. Remember, the world doesn't know the word that Brother Ronald knows. So I'll forgive you. I understand I'm wrestling against flesh and blood. But see, when you do things to the world, that's why they say in the world you burn bridges. Right? See, a Christian, we're taught to do these things, to, to live righteous and live holy, so people don't have anything bad to say about us. Okay, they might hate our lifestyle because our lifestyle exposes their lifestyles being wrong and being evil, but they can't, they can't, it, it, they'll never be able to come to the place and say, Oh, Brother Ronald done this to me, as someone in the world done, right? I'm always putting up people before myself. Always moving about in love and compassion. What does compassion mean? Having pity, you know, uh, patience. Um, Titus 3 and 2. Speak evil of no man to be no brawlers, but gentle show and meekness unto all men. 1 Timothy 5 and 13. And what do they learn to be idle? I read that. So let's talk about fear. 1 John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out all fear because fear has torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. So let's talk about why fear is bad and why people who fear are bad people. Right? Remember, we're talking about lust, anger, pride, laziness, gossiping, how they're all bad people. Because we know they do. So why is, you say, well, how is somebody a bad person that is fearful? You don't have the knowledge of God. This is why he sends people as myself. To break it down to you. Now, when you have fear inside of you, fear will make you judge other people that's going to do you wrong who's not going to do you wrong. Fear makes you to be skeptical and move about in nervousness. So now you think, oh, I'm not going to talk to them. He looked like he might rob me or he looks like, you know, he's a thief or she, right? You're fearful. You don't want, you know, you're afraid. You don't trust in the Lord. You don't think the Lord's going to protect you. You don't think that his grace is going to cover you. So you're fearful. So now you go get a gun license, right? You, oh, I got to watch myself. You know, all these, these creeps out here and these weirdos and these perverts and these tree jumpers. I got to get me a gun. Got to get me a Glock, right? So somebody try me, I'm going to blow their head off. That's fear. Because fear is telling you. That's why the Bible said, what? What did the Bible say? And because fear has torment. That's right. The, the spirit of fear is telling you, you got to watch out. Don't trust people. Don't park your car too far 
at late at night when, when you're at Walmart, park close to the building where the lights are at, that's fear. Because now you can't get close to the Walmart because it's too busy. You got to park further down. Now you're worried. You, you, you know, you forgot your keys in the car. You know, forgot your phone, forgot your wallet because you're not your mind is not free from the cares of the world, from the fear of the world. So you can't move about without having anxiety. So fear. Remember, every spirit is attached to another spirit. Right. So when you're moving about in fear, you're moving also about an anxiety. So now you're moving all quick. You don't got the car. Let me let me let me speed walk. Let me get up and get up and get, and get up and get up in this store. Right. Now you don't got up in the store, forgot your car, forgot your wallet. You done, you done went in there and bought everything and, and got to the checkout line, got to the car, put everything in the trunk or in the back seat or the front seat and forgot what you were supposed to get. But now you like, I don't want to have to walk back to that car and have to come back in here. Somebody might see me and see I bought all this stuff and might try to rob me. I just watched that TV show. I just watched that movie. I just watched that movie with Jay Lowe. Enough. Somebody might try to kidnap me. I've been watching sex trafficking. I've been watching humans uh, uh, being kidnapped from Mexico, being brought, like, you know, you understand? So all that stuff that you put in yourself and also that you're letting the devil to put in you. So the Bible say, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exhausts against the knowledge of God and bring down the character to the beast of Christ. That's why a lot of police officers shoot people because they'd be fearful. Anxiety telling them, you better watch out. He looked like a gangster. He, he, he looked like he high on something. Yeah, he moving around in there. See what he doing. You thinking it's your thoughts. That's the spirits talking to you. I'm telling you. But because you're not spiritual, you can't tell the difference between them making it, giving you a thought and your own thoughts. Because you think yourself, but the spirit also give you thoughts. And you, it, it's just like your thoughts. Because you're not spiritual, you can't tell the difference. Because in your mind, you think evil, you speak evil, you watch evil. So when you get an evil thought in your mind, if you were spiritual, right, you had, you had an evil thought in your mind, you would know that it's not, I'm just saying, if, 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 that, if that was the case, you would know that it's not coming from you. Because you don't think that way, you don't speak that way. That, that, that's like, that's like... That's like, that's like you being a Caucasian person and, and out your mouth, you just hear like, you know, you know, you're not, you're not racist and you don't believe in saying the N word. Right. So, but you hear it in your mind. What you going to say? What? You gonna, like, just say you hear in your mind. I hate those N words. Right. Right. That would seem strange, wouldn't it? But if you walk around as a Caucasian person and you say that, I hate those ends. It, so when the spirit give you a thought about black people and say, look, at them little, the monk, the monkeys. Look at them little black, them black, them black, them black bastards, right? Whatever. You're not going to be surprised and shocked because you're already entertaining thoughts in your own mind from the evilness that, I mean, you're entertaining thoughts in your mind about black people being the N-words, right? So this is why I'm telling you when you're in the world, you don't catch the thoughts that Satan is putting in your mind because you're already thinking those ways anyway. You're already lusting. So when you think about a woman's big old butt, or big old breasts, or small butt, or small breasts, or a man, private part, or his chest, his muscles, whatever. You 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 already think that way. So when you out and about, you like, you get a thought in your mind. I gotta get me a man, a man that's gonna be sexy, a woman that's gonna be sexy, a woman that's gonna look good, a woman that's gonna be. You thinking that's coming from you? That's Satan. He know you about to go to Walmart. He know you about to go in public. He know you about to go somewhere. That's him, right? And you, y'all working together. That's right. You see, so you don't understand how fear works. If you fear, if you if you commit sin, because the Bible says God didn't give the spirit of fear. That's right. So it's not it's not it's not okay to, to be in fear. What you fearful for? To die is a miracle and a blessing. Nobody care how we're going to leave out this world as a believer. What did Paul and them talk about fear? And Paul said, you know, he he kept the faith. Read it for yourself. He said he did what? He fought the fight. He stayed the course. He said, you know, my departure, is, my time of departure is at hand. Peter said, I must put off this tabernacle as the Lord has showed me. And the brothers wasn't scared. The Lord wasn't scared. He said, he told him that he, he was going to have to die and raise on the third day. He didn't, he didn't look at fear, death and, 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 and fear. Paul, what, um, what about Stephen? Stephen wasn't crying and, and boo-hooing. John wasn't like, get me out of jail. Peter wasn't afraid. He was sleeping beside two guards. Paul and Silas, they were singing praises. While they was, they was facing, you know, potential death. And seriously, bodily harm from from the people that that arrested them. Come on now, show me where anyone who was screaming for fear. That, they, they, that's what I'm saying. They was alive today. They couldn't relate to you. Fear is torment. I'm gonna get me a gun. Can't trust nobody. Might try to kidnap me. Where's your God? Yes, those things do happen to those who are not in God. So that's how you know that you're not in God because you think the same way 
of the people who are not in God. They think the same way. Non-believers got guns. You're a believer. Oh, it's okay to have guns. I know that's right. You're a non-believer. Because non-believers got guns too. We're not supposed to be the same as them, brothers and sisters. We're not. Okay? The difference between myself and other people is our response. I'm going to fight back with scripture using Bible chapter and verse. The false Christian is going to fight back with what they feel and what they think. Committing a sin. Leaning to their own understandings. See the difference? That's why they get mad at me. I'm going to fight back with the word of God. They're going to fight back with how they feel. They're going to say, oh, I, the Bible, you know, it's okay for us to, you know, drink a little bit sometime. Long as God tell us, because they was taught that way. Somebody taught them that. Whenever they got introduced to, to, to God through superstition, they were, somebody told them that, they, they picked that up from somebody that, 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 that introduced them to false God. Because when they was told God, it was like, yeah, God wants you. It's okay sometimes. Look, God don't, they wasn't like, look, look, listen to me. I, I know many don't want to admit this. I know many don't want to keep it real and agree with me on this. But you know, when majority of y'all were taught about God, even growing up, it wasn't Bible chapter and verse, everything that was said about God. You know, your moms and your dads was loosely just saying things about God. Maybe incorporating the Bible verse here and there throughout your life. But they wasn't like I'm doing. Look what laziness say. Look what I didn't say. They wasn't doing that. They said, you know, God don't like ugly. You know, God don't. You want God to bless you. You better, you better clean that room. They're not, they didn't show you the Bible chapter and verse. So you grow up saying things about God, incorporating what you want. Or you heard about God. Or even the internet. If you're always on the internet, search things about God, guess what? Yeah, that's how you're going to respond. Because that's how they write on, on Bible commentary. They'd be like, yeah, I just believe and I think that Christ would have been 5'11 because people that's from, from Bethlehem and, you know, Galilee, you know, you see what I'm trying to say? So you adapt that way. See, a true Christian has the spirit. The spirit is going to do what the spirit did in Paul and Peter. So if Brother Ronald have the spirit, then I'm going to speak the same things that Paul spoke, the same thing that the Lord spoke, the same thing that John and James spoke. I'm going to be in complete agreement with them. You understand? Because I have the same spirit. You see? So that's the difference between me and other people who don't have the spirit. They're going to come back and say what they think. Oh, well, yeah, brother, yeah, this is what I feel. I don't look, I don't, I don't feel nothing. I'm only doing what I'm supposed to say. What I feel is not going to change anything. What I feel is not going to make people stop sinning. What I feel is not going to cast spirits out. It's only by the power of God. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. Not Ronald's kingdom, not, not, not Jacob's kingdom, not this, the kingdom of God. It's not Jesus, it's not Ronald's gospel, it's Jesus' gospel. It's not Ronald's power. It's God's power. So I have, you know, that's how you know a person has a different assignment, a different mission when it's all about them and not about God. They're here just to make you feel good and sound good and for you to, you know, pay them money and do whatever. That's it. They're not here for God because they would, they would just, they make it all about what they feel and what they come up with and how they make you feel when they're talking. It's a difference. When it's about God, we only going to tell you about God because we know God's power. In our English language, we understand English words and how those words are supposed to be used properly you don't know greek or hebrew because that's not your first language it's like if someone were to say i'm so happy that i'm walking around so fierce and so angry does that make any sense so let me explain what i'm saying greek and hebrew is not our first language right so we know english we understand english so when we hear somebody say something in in the english language like hey i'm so happy i have so much joy that i'm so angry and I'm so fierce, right? I'm so fierce and I'm so angry. Wouldn't you be scratching your head? So why when you read the Greek or the Hebrew and they're telling you that the word perfect means to be spiritual mature or that this word means to, you know, eat marshmallows and, and, and swim down a river of chocolate. You understand? Like, wouldn't that be weird the same way if we understand words, okay? And if the word is the same, if, if the Bible is already translated, the word's supposed to be the same. So why would the words be different? That does not make any sense, brothers and sisters. Right? If you read it in Greek, you don't know who wrote that, that, that Greek translation. You haven't done no background research to say, let me check the, the authenticity of this Greek and this Hebrew. You don't know. You just, you, just, you just read it and you go with it. Oh, the Greek says, the Hebrew says. Like there is no, that's like, that's like, what, like Muhammad. Right? 
the 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 the, the person who brought uh, the world the fake Islam stuff, right? The brother doesn't have no like there's there's no like his, history as it is about Jesus and, and and all the prophets and the holy men that came before us. It's not the same. Muhammad came out of thin air and just said somebody God told me this. But we see men of God from 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 Adam and Eve, you know, to 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 Noah, to Abraham. I mean, the list goes on, right? You see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and you see the promise, and it all making sense, and you seeing how God was with them. The Quran, not so. They copied our Bible and put their own spin and twist on it. You see what I'm trying to say? You see? So you don't know the authenticity of the Hebrew and the Greek that you're reading, but you're you're gravitating to it and saying, "Oh yeah, the Greek says and the Hebrew says." Come on. A man wrote that, but a man didn't write this Bible, okay? God wrote the Bible, right? And moved the men to write down what he wanted. The same way, you know, ain't no human being come up with the Ten Commandments. And every nation in this world breaks the Ten Commandments. Come on now. You know, ain't no man write this Bible when there is no man but Jesus that lived on this earth that obeyed it. Even Malcolm X, Moses the King, didn't obey the Bible. That's right. So you're not skilled to understand what sins MLK committed against God. You don't know the word of God. This, this, this ain't about what he did. That's, see, listen, this is my religion. Remember, I'm in America, right? So I got the right to freedom of speech. I got the right to religion, right? So I'm speaking to you what my religion says, that the things that MLK did, a lot of things were against God's word. You want to know what they are? Let's sit down and talk about it. I give you Bible chapter and verse. And show you facts of things that he did and was a part of. Even the denomination that he was from that was not of God. I'm just giving you facts. I understand how people feel about him, right? I understand that. But ain't no man bigger than Jesus. Ain't no man bigger than the program. Ain't no man is put on no pedestal higher than Jesus. Don't care what they did. Y'all worship these people more than y'all worship Jesus. There ain't no statue of the Lord nowhere. Ain't no Jesus, ain't no Jesus highway. You got Martin Luther King Highway, Martin Luther King Road, and Martin Luther King Statue, and Martin Luther King Day, and all this stuff. How, how is man above Christ? You don't see people re representing Christ's birthday, right? Oh, this is Christ's birthday, Christ's birthday. They say Christ and Santa Claus. But you see Martin Luther King and all these, these men that came, they get put on pedestals. You don't see not one memorial of Jesus anywhere in America. But you got memorials of Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and... And all these people that Jackie Jordan are cursing. And women were like, come on, brothers and sisters. I don't want to hear nothing about that black, uh, you know, black history stuff. Ain't none of them people ever did what Jesus Christ did. They were all biased and had their own. He said, I have a dream. No, ain't no, we don't have no dream. The Bible says, such a good man are ordered by the Lord to live in his way. You see, so y'all want to get me started with this, right? That's why I'm just going to stay in my lane. But I'm just showing you that people... Stand for what man stand for and what man believe and not God. They have no respect for God, no love for God, and they put men on pedestals. They build statues at the men. Walt Disney, they had Bill Cosby statue in Disney World. You understand? Do you see how they treat men? You don't see the Lord being treated that way. No, you don't. You see crosses everywhere. Crosses that, that, that false believers started. Ain't nowhere we talking about, ain't nowhere Paul gave no instructions or God gave instructions about having crosses on your churches or on bill like that, they all look the same. Catholic churches got crosses. These Baptists, all these, you know, false Christian, it's the same thing. They don't care about God. All I'm saying to you is how do you believe in the Greek and the Hebrew without even fact checking if this is even authentic Hebrew or Greek? Or who are the people that, that's even that's even speaking these words, these translations? Supposed to be the same. The Bible was translated from so what are you saying? So in order for you to say the Greek version says or the Hebrew version says, you're saying that it's two things you're saying. The Bible is questionable, right? It's not it's not authentic. And you're saying that the Hebrew and the Greek that you're reading that a man or whoever wrote it, a robot, whatever, is authentic. That's blasphemy. Okay? Philippians 3. For we are circumcision, which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. See that? But they do. They didn't tell you it's of the flesh. Everything they tell you is of what they feel and what they think. You see that? So anybody, and I, I just gave y'all a few, I just gave y'all a few um, sinful verses, I mean, a few sins, and gave you the verses that's in the Bible. There's many more, right? But I'm just showing you, anybody that sins, whether you claim to be a Christian, 
whether you claim, whether you're not a, a claim to be nothing, atheist, or just a non-believer of anything, or if you're a believer of, of different religions, false religions, you are a bad person. I proved it. Show me where sin produces good fruit. Show me where anger is good. Violence is good. Rage is good. Unforgiveness is good. Bitterness is good. Lust is good. Uh, laziness is good. Show me anywhere where sin is good. That's why y'all can't tell me nothing about Jesus and my God. Y'all can't tell me nothing about, oh, uh, I'm a sinner. You know, I'm saved. You know, we, we sin all the time. No, you sin all the time. I've been taught not to sin. The same way I've been taught how to drive. The same way I've been taught how to cook. The same way I've been taught how to, how to work out. Right? How to do push-ups. How to do squats. The same way I've been taught how to change pampers. It's the same thing that the gospel teaches you. How to live righteously. Right? How to live how, the Bible says that grace and salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live righteously, godly, right? Soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. You see? So, this is the point I'm making to y'all. The same way we've been taught how to do things. The gospel came and taught us how to live, how to function, how to obey God, right? So what's the problem? They don't want to because it goes against their life. It's hard. Remember what they said in Galatians 5. Right? Okay, look what he say. For the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that nine ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave us up for us that we might redeem us from all iniquity. You see that? That he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people of what? Zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. You see that? They didn't say, you know, iniquity as far as like him washing it away because he, he died on the cross. No. They're saying because of what he did, the spirit coming, the grace being given. Right. They said the grace that brings us salvation has appeared to all men teaching us. You see that? They will become the peculiar one. Right. Demons for all iniquity and, and zealous of good works. You see that? Powerful. See? So anybody that sin, I don't care who they are. Could be I'm a Christian. I'm a this, I'm that. Whatever you're claiming to be. If you're a sin... You are a bad person. You are wicked. You are evil. No matter what you say, no matter what go on, nothing that sin does produces any good fruit. And you know you can control what you do and what you don't do. Right? Because it's some days that you don't get angry. It's some days you don't be lustful. It's some days that you don't have bitterness. You see that? You're in control of that. Because if not, then how come you're not like that every day? That's a lie. The truth ain't in you. Love you all. God bless.